Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 13th of June, the year is 2022. We're your hosts. I'm David, this is Yuvella, and this is Issaquah, Washington. For, thank you, I forgot what state I was in. <laughs> we do a little bit of traveling around here. Today we're looking at 1 Kings chapters 13 and 14, 2 Chronicles 12, and Philippians 3. I'm calling this one Follow Good Examples, and we'll get into that in a moment. But dear, would you open us with a word of prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the day that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to read your word and to share with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And these podcasts and vlogs uh, are meant to be encouraging to you, and you encourage us on our travels as well. Today I'm calling this Follow good examples. And I'm pulling from Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. My observation, Paul says to follow good examples of God's way of living. There will be many who live for their stomachs or just live for earthly things. You've probably heard this, YOLO earthly things, but don't be this way. We, here's your citizenship, we are citizens of heaven. Application, and how will I be different by what I read today? I must remember that I'm not living for my time here on earth, but instead for my time in heaven. I must keep reading and listening to scripture so that I can detect when things are not right. They may only sound right, but they may not be right. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit, because we have accepted God as real and that Jesus died on a cross as a sacrifice for our sins. And I must follow the good examples and not focus on earthly things that lead to uh, whatever here on life. But I should live a life that would lead towards and lean into God. My prayer. Lord, Keep opening the doors we are to go through and close those we're not supposed to go through. Thank you for the Christian brothers and sisters who are encouraging us, especially while we move to Hawaii for a season, and as we want to continue serving you. Amen. Um, I'm going to, my um, journaling today is on what you hear that sounds right. But it may not be right. may not be right. And like yesterday, I'm going to read a lot from the scripture because it tells a story and it the you need to know the content of it to understand it. Context clues. Okay. First Kings 13 and from 7 on. And uh, I forget which king it was. Maybe it was either Rehoboam or Jeroboam. Go ahead and read. Anyhow, well, I didn't put that in here. But one of the kings said to the man of God, Come home with me for a meal, and I will give you a gift. But the man of God answered the king, Even if you were to give me half your possessions, I would not go home with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, You must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. So he took another road and did not return by the way he had come to Bethel. Now, there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel whose sons came and told him all that the man of God had done there that day. They also told their father what he had said to the king. Their father asked him, well, which way did he go? And his sons showed him which road the man of God from Judah had taken. So he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. And when they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it and rode after the man of God. He found him sitting under an oak tree and asked, Are you the man of God who came to Ju from Judah? I am, he replied. So the prophet said to him, Come with me, come home with me and eat. The man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you. Nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I have been told by the word of God, you must not eat or drink water there or return by the way you came. The old, pro the old prophet answered, I too am a prophet as you. And an angel said to me by the word of God, 
bring him back with you to, to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. So the man of God returned with him and ate and drank at his house. My observation. So what happened to the man of God who went back and ate and drank at the old prophet's house? Well, according to scripture, while they were sitting at the table, the word of God came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who came from Judah and said this, This is what the Lord of this is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of God and have kept and not kept the command the Lord has given you. You came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the town of your ancestors. When the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. As he went on his way, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. My application, how will I be changed by what I read today? Well, in Acts 17.11, it says, Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica, that's that town. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Now, the person who was preaching was Apostle Paul, and they were checking out what Apostle Paul was preaching to see if it lined up with the scriptures. Yet, even when he taught, these G the, he taught the Jews, they checked it out to see, hey, is this guy accurate? I need to do the same thing. Some things sound like scriptures, or people say they are scriptures, but they are not. Let me give you a couple examples. Cleanliness is next to godliness. That is not in the Bible. God helps those who help himself. That's not biblical. This too will pass. That's not in the Bible. Bunny is a root of all evil. That's not in the Bible. The love of money is in the Bible. So when someone says this is scriptural, I need to see if it really is. And now with Google or any search engine, it is simple to do. I have no excuse not to check to see if it is really from God's word. My prayer is really short is thank you, Lord, for reminding me to check to see if what I hear is really your truth. Amen. Amen. I checked while you were speaking is King Jeroboam. Oh, thank you. But, yeah, you're so accurate in that we have to check. Now, you have your PhD. You don't talk about this a lot, but it's in education. So citations or source documentation is critical. Mm -hmm. So when we, you say go back and check with Google or any whatever search engine, we need to make sure that we're going to some source that is accurate not that it's just on the internet abraham lincoln says we need to check our facts on the internet <laughs> have you not heard that joke before <laughs> okay so because it wasn't around when abraham was here but um we do need to go back and verify when things are said and even as a pastor i will say sometimes i'll say something by accident so you need to verify, even with me, you need to check what you're hearing from whomever, because it could be a well-known pastor, but he wasn't speaking with that intent, and he just didn't explain it so well. And there's a difference between intentionally providing bad information and then um, us just chatting and getting the name wrong. It's totally different. But we need to verify. Yeah, and I think, and you know, it, it's real easy to go to a, a, a search engine and say, where in the Bible does it say this? Yeah. And then you're finding where in the Bible it says this. Or does the Bible say this? And it should probably point it out several locations. In the scriptures, yeah. yeah. Speaking of locations, tomorrow we'll be looking at First Kings chapter 15, 
2 Chronicles chapters 13 and 14, and also Philippians chapter 4. And I'll close this out with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for uh, visiting with us. There's so many people that are hurting. We ask that you'd be with them, be those that are listening or not listening. Just encourage them and let them know that you're there for them so they can call out to you. Again, open the doors we're supposed to go through and close those that you don't want us near things. And we ask you to continue to guide us and protect us. Amen. Amen.